These are the 10 things you need to do after a layoff from someone who has gotten laid off in the past. Hey guys, I'm Genevieve and welcome back to my channel. I do videos on becoming your best self in Toronto and make sure to subscribe and like this video for more content like this and so we can be friends. So I did do a previous video on my experience getting laid off, including my emotions, how I felt and just a little bit more backstory to that. So make sure to check that video out. I will link it here as well. I thought I would create an action plan style video for how to inspire you and what what to do when you get laid off. When I first got laid off, I literally didn't know what to do. I just started crying. I was bawling my eyes out. I was like, I don't even know how to experience this in the moment. Like, what is the first thing that I do after I get let off? And I f immediately felt so much pressure that I had to be like doing the most, going to find a job right away, doing exactly what it is I want to do next. But the reality is that you're not always going to know that and that's okay. So here are the 10 steps. The first one is to take at least one day to be kind to yourself and heal. I was listening to Jay Shetty's podcast the other day, and this is one of my favorite podcasts, but he did say that experiencing a layoff was on the list of the top 10 like hardest things to go through, along with like divorce and like a couple, a lot of other stuff like that. So that's just your reminder that experiencing a layoff is hard and it is not something that like you should immediately expect yourself to be okay from. I want you to remind yourself that you can do hard things and whatever it is that has happened or the reason why you're coming across this video and watching this right now you can do hard things and i believe in you one of the things that helped me the most was reminding myself that this is part of the character development character development part of the growth and that i would ultimately end up better at the end of it easier said than done though that's fair the second one is to spend time with your loved ones don't be afraid to lean on them for support or you know share how you really feel about this People are empathetic and they will understand and do the best they can to support you. But also, I mean, I guess you don't have to unload everything. You could also go to therapy if you do want to fully unload all your emotions and maybe get some professional help. I think that's always a great route to go as well. The third one is to reflect. Take some time to think about how this layoff made you feel. Maybe it's bringing out limiting beliefs within yourself, or maybe you feel mad or angry at your company, or maybe you're happy. Maybe you're happy that you no longer have to work at your nine to five job. Whatever it is that you're feeling, reflect on this, feel it, and really start reevaluating some of your goals. Are you doing something you love? Maybe you're just doing it for the paycheck, which is totally fine too, but really reevaluate your current situation and where you want to be tomorrow. You don't have to know the answer, but just take some time to actually think about it. The fourth one is to feel your emotions. Like I said, whether you're sad, mad, happy, angry, there are so many emotions that you can feel from a layoff. And I don't think it's good for us to suppress any of those emotions. My belief is that when we release emotions, we are doing our bodies a favor because these negative emotions can end up piling up within us and can cause negative effects in the long term because we realize it's not something we ever let go of and it's not something we ever healed because we truly just suppressed it. I don't know if you guys are familiar with trigger points, but we may have certain things when they keep happening to us where we suddenly feel this huge pit in our stomach. Like it's something that is from the past that we totally buried under the rug under the rug but something similar happens and we feel really negatively towards it it's the same thing if we don't let these emotions out we don't let them heal in the future if something else were to happen that were to trigger this sort of negative traumatic experience for you it's going to hurt just as much so i think putting in the work in the early stages and giving yourself the space and time to heal is so important number five is to file for unemployment. I feel like this one may be an, may be an obvious one, but in Canada at least, usually if you're laid off, you're, you'll be eligible for some form of EI. Of course, you have to check that with the government and the rules and everything, but there is an official process to actually file for employment insurance. And I don't know, personally, like I wanted to take advantage of this and let myself, you know, reduce some of that pressure from you know not having to rely on just my own savings but have this additional cushion because you know I worked and I paid EI so I should be getting these benefits and so that's one thing that you can definitely do and if you end up getting severance from your company you know you can only apply after your severance is complete um, so you know just making sure you have all the right paperwork and all of that to get that done. Number six is to start on your emergency funds. Okay, so maybe you have some savings up, savings already. Maybe you don't have much savings, 
look at what you're currently spending on rent, whether you can move back home and all of these types of options. I think taking a full look at your current financial situation can really help you assess next steps and how fast you need to be applying for a new job, getting a new job versus if you have a little bit of time to figure out your next steps and not have to rush. Look at your savings and calculate how many months can you comfortably rely on your savings. I guess you can add an EI if you're getting that as well, but look at this number and use that as your goal. So maybe it's two months, maybe it's three, maybe it's six. Of course, we all have different levels of privilege. Like for me, I know I could always move back to my family, which I'm very thankful and I understand that's a blessing that not everyone has, but look at those as well. Those are factors that will contribute to how much time you have to really figure out your next steps and keep yourself accountable in actually setting a goal for yourself. Number seven is to reach out to your network. Take advantage of your LinkedIn network, your personal connections. Like so many people will share their layoffs publicly on LinkedIn, which is also a great way to have people message you about job opportunities. So don't be afraid to share this experience. At this point, I feel like so many people have experienced a layoff that, you know, people are just here to support. I well, I would hope most good people out there want to support other people. Like for me, it's like if that happened to my friend, I would easily 100 percent want to support them and refer them in any way that I can. So you can take advantage of this, but you can also ask your personal network to see if they know anyone that's hiring. We have so many spheres of influence that when you start talking about it, it runs down the grapevine and people will hear and you will find the opportunity that is perfect for you. Number eight is to create a 90 day plan and build a consistent routine. For me, I think the hardest part of adjusting from a nine to five to going to being laid off and fully unemployed was having a firm routine in place that made me feel like I had a sense of purpose and that I knew what I was doing with my day versus just waking up and having no idea how to spend my entire day. This can be a great way to just feel like you're still in that same kind of workflow and stay motivated without losing track of your goals. So setting a schedule, like I like to block off my calendar, I'll have different chunks being like, if I was to go back to a job, I would put in, you know, apply for jobs, network with someone, check on LinkedIn and apply for to two jobs today. Set some actionable goals for each week or month and try to stick to them to the best of your abilities. I also like to in include some self-care activities like working out and taking time to spend time with friends within the schedule. Because at the end of the day, these are still priorities for me and for my overall well-being. So that was something I wanted to include. Number nine is to have some fun too and do not, do not let the negative voices in your head take control of you and control your life. Looking back, like the worst thing I could have done to myself was let this layoff get into my head and make me think I wasn't capable of success. Positive affirmations can make the world of a difference to helping you get out of that rut and start attracting the opportunities that you most desire. If you are privileged enough to be able to afford some time to travel or, you know, take a little bit of time off to rest and to seek out what's next, I don't think you should be ashamed for taking advantage of that and allowing yourself to get away for a little bit and clear your mind and find your sense of purpose again. And don't forget to have a little bit of fun along the way. It could even be something as little as going for a walk with a friend or visiting a loved one and just hanging out with them and having a movie night in. There are so many affordable things that you can do when you're laid off um, what, and you're still thinking about your budget that can make the biggest impact. Number 10, know your worth. If you do plan to go back to a job, research the companies that you're going to. For me, when I was laid off, I reflected a lot on my company and like what, what some of the things that I thought I did wrong in my recruiting process that I didn't catch that, you know, they might potentially be doing layoffs within a year. After joining the company, however, I realized, you know, there were some other questions I could have asked in the interview process that maybe would have helped. So really assess the team, the company, et cetera. I think if there's one thing that a layoff teaches you, it definitely teaches you what kind of questions you want to ask your next employer about the company and the growth. So many specific things that I would have asked about the product, about, you know, their clients and like their metrics and all that stuff. I don't know how much they would have revealed, but their answers would have told me the story. So your worth is not defined by your company's decision to lay you off. You are a talented and smart and capable individual. And trust me, there are going to be so many better opportunities out there for you. This is where I like to use the quote to end off this video. Rejection is redirection. This is 100% one of my favorite quotes because every time I get rejected or anything, this is like the most positive way I think you can look at 
rejection is that I'm just being redirected into a better path. Anyways, I hope these 10 tips were really helpful. Anyways, I hope these 10 tips were helpful. And if you did watch this whole video, then thank you guys so much for watching. Um, if you like videos like this or you want to see anything else, then make sure to comment down below for more. I also wanted to do a quick disclaimer at the end of this video that I acknowledge that not everyone has the time to rest after layoff and it is a very stressful time when you do have a lot of expenses and you know like you you don't know how you're financially going to be able to handle it. So don't be afraid to seek professional support whether it's getting a financial advisor or even seeking out like close relatives or friends or if you don't have that like do rely on that government support and even pick up a part-time job or be open to you know jobs that maybe you won't necessarily want in the long term but using that as a stepping stone to get you to where you want understand everyone has their own individual financial situations and support systems in place so so this is by no means saying that everyone has the opportunity to rest or to travel, but just a few things to inspire you if you are feeling like you're in a rut. Thank you guys again and hope you have a wonderful week.